Welcome, everybody, to the Competition Archery Media Podcast, where we explore all things pertaining to competition archery. I'm your host, PJ Riley, and the CAM Podcast is brought to you by O'Neill's Classic Archery. And today with us, we have, after just announcing his switch to Ultra Arrows, Levi Morgan. Levi, thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me, PJ. It's always always a good time. So, 17 years shooting with Gold Tip. Tell, walk us through, you know, how this all came about. Um, yeah, I've been a my longest sponsor was was Gold Tip. My first sponsor was Gold Tip, and honestly, I never imagined that I would uh I would even consider leaving you know and i up to this point i never even had a conversation really other than one 12 or 13 years ago uh i shot one <laughs> tournament with easton um while i was negotiating with gold tip but since then i've never even entertained a conversation really um but so you know just things have changed a little bit not there's still a lot of people there at gold tip that were original and that i had a great personal relationship but with you know, it's, it's just bigger its own. And, and it's not as, it doesn't feel like the same, I guess. It's hard to explain. I, and I don't want to come off like I'm saying anything bad about Gold Tip because right. I have zero bad to say about them but as people, as a company, uh, as a product, anything. Um, just things had changed, I guess, would be the easiest way to say it. Um, and, uh, you know, when I first went to Gold Tip, it was Tom Zolinovich was the owner. Um, really in the beginning and it was uh we were just really excited it was personal relationships it was let's build this team to be the best in the in archery and we did that i think um back then we had everybody i mean we were killing it as, as a as a team and then it went bigger and more corporate and then it was just less of a team and it really towards the end i felt there was only a couple left you know and it wasn't like a, a really team atmosphere that i like and, and for me i love that team feel like hey we're all out here and with one goal and that's to build a really cool company um together and a good good vibes and good atmosphere and and um you know there were some things said from some of the you know one of the a couple of the main guys that, there that shoot that really threw a wrench in that for me i think um as far as the team atmosphere feeling like i was safe i guess more than anything yeah um and so then I, it was kind of like the perfect storm i started talking to darren about you know he's like hey would you ever have the conversation and it was just the perfect chain of events that led to that for me saying yeah let's let's talk and see what happens and then i started testing them and i was like holy cow you know so <laughs> um Honestly, and so like, and, and I've already read the comments. Like, I'm getting yep. paid, you know, I'm left for the money, like you know, <laughs> and I'm actually getting paid uh, less than half. Um, so for what I was getting paid <laughs> on my contract, so that's not it. I, I really am impressed with the company and the and the product, yeah. and mainly just the atmosphere around the team of, of what the the goal is and what the direction is. So that was really my biggest reason for for switching. So. I would have met, well, first off, I mean, how can you not have a good team atmosphere with people like Darren Christianberry and Nathan know, Brooks? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that, and that's what's fun. You know, it's, it's, it's fun when you show up to work and you don't feel like you're going to get lectured on what you need to do different and better, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, you know, so it's like, okay, let's, let's show up. We all know what our, our goals are. We all know what we're supposed to do here. And, and, uh, let's have some laughs in the meantime and, uh, do something really cool. I would imagine too, someone in your position. So, okay. Like people say, Oh, you know, the money, the money at some point. Yeah. This is a job. You got bills to pay family to feed all that stuff, just like everybody else. And this is how you do it. But it would seem to me also, especially as you know, you're getting advanced in your career, that the opportunity how many opportunities do you get to start from the ground floor like gold tip was young when you started but they yeah, yeah. were established this is ultra i mean when we posted or when you posted your announcement about it people were like what's ultra i never even heard of it yeah, before exactly. <laughs> so yeah, i would think that's got to mean something to somebody like you to take it from the ground up yeah, it does. You know, when, when the goal, cause my goal has never been to just kind of 
plateau and stay here. You know, I, it's not who I am in general, um, I guess. And so that's what I, I really the, like what was so fun about gold tip in the beginning, you know, and, and then once it, you know, it grew so big and then it was just like, it start leaning out like all companies do, you know, we're going to sure. sell. So it's like lean out and get rid of all the, you know, this and that guy and that guy and that guy. And it was just like, everybody that was the team was gone, you know, pretty much. Um, and so it just, at that point, that's, I'm not a businessman, you know, for, I don't claim to be, I'm not very good at it, to be honest. I've been very fortunate to make some money in this game, but at the end of the day, that's not how I make my decisions, you know? And right. so, yeah, ultra is taking care of me and, and we have a great understanding of what's expected on both ends. But the main thing was, this is going to be really fun to start from nothing and let's grow this to who knows what. You know, I think what the vision I see it as could be the biggest aero company in the world, you know, just with the quality of product and quality of people that are running this team. Um, it's going to be a fun, a fun ride, no matter what. Right, right. So how long, ha when did you start playing around with them? So they gave me arrows at the Classic Okay. Um, and, uh, in a yellow arrow tube kind of hidden behind the, <laughs> <laughs> the booth there and said, Hey, go home, see what you think about this in the off season. And, um, uh, so I did, I, I played around, just tested weights and tolerances. And really for me with arrows, the big thing is components. You know, if, if I got to find components from 40 different places to try to build a dozen arrows, it's a nightmare. Right. Um, and so that was the biggest thing. And this was very early on, like we, they were still testing stuff. And so I got to see it some from the beginning really, and, and was very impressed and it's done nothing but get ex like extremely good. And, and so this morning I'm building arrows and I'm weighing, you know, normally I'll build and I'm building 27s for mirrors. Um, and normally I'd build a dozen tournament arrows and two of them wouldn't weigh what I would call in spec, you know, yeah. uh, within they would be four or five grains different, you know? And so for me, I'm like, maybe I won't see that at 50 yards, but I still don't like it, you know? And so I'd put a little asterisk on it and put it in my quiver and see where it hit. But I was weighing these this morning and they have not yet been more than a grain from apart. And, and the tolerances are just incredible. So in what we do, confidence is so important. And it's just like every little thing that you think it doesn't get in there, but it does, you know, and you're building a dozen arrows and you're like, Oh, that weighs bad. That spins bad. Even if it hits good, you, your subconscious never lets that go. You know, you're like, this isn't you in your mind, you're like this isn't a pristine dozen arrows. So it is very important from the little bitty things all the way through to have that confidence to stand there when that final shot is for everything and know that, Hey, I got the best stuff in the world. Now I just got to make the shot. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, um, so twenty sevens you're shooting. Uh, obviously, we're in indoor season now. There's a couple of those, but that's what you shoot for three D as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, I've off and on in the past shot X cutters and twenty threes and thirty um, X. I've shot all over the place. Last year I shot triple X's, which is a twenty seven. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to do this year. Shot really well out of the title. Um, and that's really the deciding factor is what, what, you know, um, bow arrow combination shoots best, tunes best, groups best. Um, and the, the title really liked that bigger diameter arrow. So that's what I'm going to start with. Not saying I won't change to a 23 this season for 3d at some point I might, um, but to start, yeah. we're, we're going with the 27. Yeah, I, I happen to have Premier 27s oh, yeah. right here. Um, yeah. And, yeah, when Josh Sidebottom came in here, to we uh, recorded videos on all the arrows before they launched. Uh, and so he left some here, and so yeah. I just started playing around with them. I'm not a pro. I'm just the hacker in the backyard shooting. And, I, I you know – I don't know. I told Darren the same thing. I said, I just picked these up and all of a sudden they were just more of them were hitting the X than what I was yeah. shooting before. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
And that's what I've been telling people. I said, hey, I'm not the person to tell you this is better than another arrow. What right. I can tell you is I shoot this one really well. I, yeah. For whatever yeah, that I means. That. <laughs> I agree with that 100%. Even on my hunting stuff, um, I shot my first deer uh, this past week in Texas with them because I okay. January 1st is when I could start actually promoting and using and filming with them. Yeah. But I had been testing them and I'm like, man, you know, and, and so I had heard of like this no spine technology. Other people tried that in the past, the three spine technology, the, yep. all this stuff. <laughs> and I, in my opinion, I was like, that's garbage. You know, I want to know where the spine's at, you yep. know? So I went through all, and even with the LRP system, which we went through and test spines on, on stuff. Um, cause it's so important, you know, when you have that weak and, and stiff spine, if you don't have it turned the same, on from arrow to arrow to arrow those arrows react different out of the bow and so i'm like no 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 this no spine no way you know so i'm over here testing spine and i can't find it i'm like okay <laughs> don't know you know so yeah. like, let's build a dozen we build a dozen we go out they all hit i don't have to do any knock turning i'm like that's a fluke so i just keep <laughs> doing it so far i find the same thing i'm not having to knock tune any of my arrows i'm not having to find try to spend hours finding the spine and and so um, there really is something to it. It's a very forgiving arrow. You know, it's yeah. like, it just, I don't have flyers right now. I'm not saying it don't, won't happen, but from the testing I've done, I'm, I'm very pleased, very impressed. Um, it's a, I feel like I can go out and do as good or better than I've ever done with these things. So now it's been 17 years since you changed mm -hmm. arrow companies, uh, right. but when's the last time you headed into a season with a brand new bow, the title. I mean, you got to shoot the last tournament last year with it, the yeah. classic, but with a new bow and a new arrow, even if it was, you yeah. know, a new one in the gold tip line, when's the last time you had both of them being new as you headed into a season? Yeah. Oh. 2006, <laughs> 2007, it's been a long, long time, yeah. um, a long, long time. So, um, yeah, but honestly it feels good. Sometimes you just need that. You know, the title was instant, you yeah. know, for me, it took zero time to love that bow. Um, and you know, got second at the classic won the IBO world with it, with the only two tournaments I got to shoot, um, and honestly shot well enough to win the classic just just wasn't meant to be, you know? And yeah. so I have a ton of confidence in that bow only having a week behind it before really four days, I think before the classic is how long I had it. Um, so it was an instant love that, you know, that we just kind of hit it off and obviously McCarthy hit it off with it too, um, <laughs> which didn't work out great for me at the classic, but, um, so I, I have no, nothing but excitement really for the beginning of the, of the 3d season. At least I'm not ever excited about indoors, but right. <laughs> survive that time of year to get to, to the 3d part. So did it. So speaking of the title, like, were you surprised then to see, I mean, there's Stefan Hansen shot 990 X at Rushmore rumble. Yeah. Jimmy Lutz was up there. Perkins, a bunch of guys shooting the title were mm -hmm. in that top pack at Rushmore. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing that didn't surprise you any. No, not at all. I felt very lucky to get two tournaments before everybody else with it. You know, it's kind of like you felt uh, – me and McCarthy talked on the phone when we got them um, because we were the two getting them for the launch. We About two days in, we called – I remember sitting in there in my shop talking to him, and we both were like, we have an advantage. You know, like <laughs> this was not because we were afraid we were going to be at a disadvantage. You know, you get a yeah. new bow, you've been shooting something different, and it's just like, okay, uh, this it's shooter of the years on the line, the classic, the IBO Worlds is the biggest three things coming to a head here, <laughs> and we are switching both. Like, but then after a few days, we're like, hey, this was a good thing. You know, like yeah, it's going to be a battle because these things will shoot. So. No, I knew as soon as everybody else got them in their hands, they were going to, you know, the, it was just going to go to that next level of, yeah. of, it's, of talent and shooting. So I, I've been having fun with it. It just shoots. I have not shot any 3D with it, but indoors, I don't, it just, for me, it just holds steadier. 
Um, yeah. I'm really liking it and shooting with these ultra arrows. I've been enjoying yeah. that too. What, what is your, uh, setup for your, uh, 27 arrows? What are you shooting? What points? Yeah. If I'm shooting 150 grain points right now, um, I'm not setting up an indoor bow, you know, okay. so, so, so to speak, I'm just shooting my 3d stuff from the get go. Uh, I'm going to shoot it indoors. What little indoors I'm going to shoot this year. Um, uh, I'm going to be running uh, three. I ran four fletch last year um, with uh, the 105.75 offset. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going back right now. I'm by Foley. It may be back to four fletch, but I'm doing some testing right now with three fletch uh, 275 with a little bit more helical on them. Um, just because I didn't have any issue. I, the four fletch shot, I felt like shot a little better, but it's very hard to run that on a blade rest. Um, yeah. I did get clearance, but if it got turned at all, it was contact. And then with the tack veins, you do not want contact. They're very stiff. So, um, I went back to the three flesh just for ease, like not having to worry about getting contact off my veins or anything like that. So that's what I'm running right now. The 27 premieres, 450 grains exactly with 150 up front. And I'm running the pin knocks right now. Um, I, I am going to run pretty high poundage for 3D, so we're going to see how the pin knocks do for that. I love pin knocks, um, yeah. but sometimes they're they're tiny and they they with that you know hard that power coming yeah. through them. Sometimes it'll spread them a little bit. So I'm curious to see how the pin knocks are going to do if I have to go back to like the GT type knocks or um, or the like a G knock or something like that. I might, but um, you said we'll high see. poundage. What what is what poundage are you able to get? with the title i'm gonna shoot probably 75 pounds out of the title does it do they have a 75 mod i hadn't seen i that. hope that's what i ordered oh <laughs> <laughs> I, that I, might be why derek said hey call me um because <laughs> I ordered 75 pound mods that's what i want so yeah yeah uh, we'll see i i uh i always love to, to run between 72 and 75 pounds and and I believe you said it at the classic anyway that you went with the higher percentage let off, the eighty percent versus the low one. Yeah, because I started the year because I with the TRX seven, I love the seventy V mods. Yeah, um, but I never could get that feel with the TRX forty, um, and then. I was having some left and right issues and some, me and McCarthy were at an IBO and I judged so well, but I was like, just off left, just off right. And he said, you need to try, cause he was shooting 80% mods on his TRX, um, 36. And I he's like, you need to go home and try eighties. So I, that's when I went home and pulled my V three X off the wall. Cause it was a, such a high percentage let off. And just to start seeing how, if I liked that feel and it shot so well, I went and shot it, and then came back with the phase four, one with the phase four, all high let off. So whenever I ordered my title, I was like, send me the high let off, you know, and, oh, yeah. and liked it from the beginning. Um, so I used to not like high let off in tournaments because I felt like I got that little bit of wrist when I got nervous. It yeah. let me do this a little more and I would my line would start to spread and, and under pressure. But at the classic, that was really all I was worried about. But once I got in that shoot off, it was like it just like it got even more precise, you know, and I think I hit four out of five rings in that shoot off and then went to the IBO worlds and won by the largest margin. I think anybody's ever won it by. So it was yeah. the title just performs really well under pressure. So, right. Right. Huh. That's awesome. So, yeah. um, uh, yeah. Uh, so going into the 2024 season, new bow, new arrows, um, you mentioned it a little bit, how sometimes that's a good thing. I would imagine after doing the same thing year after year after year that, yeah, it might be kind of like, Hey, all right. You know, a little bit of excitement <laughs> for something different. <laughs> I've always kind of done that too. Just even with releases or, you know, I'll show up with a button and the next turn I'll show up with a hinge and just something to keep me going. This is fun, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm just learning like, and then you kind of takes your mind off of what's at stake. Sometimes I like to switch it up every once in a while. Um, but like back years ago with the apex one, one year I just showed up with a pro hunter arrow because they'd never won a tournament with it. And, <laughs> and I won four in a row. I won uh reading and three ASAs, I think like back to back to back. And, um, and then one year quick fletch, 
called me and said, Hey, nobody's ever won with our, our dip veins. You know, the ones you dip in the, in the heat, in the hot water. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, I'll try, you know, I just have <laughs> always been, uh, something like, Hey, uh, let's do something different and, and see if we can perform, see if we can get to perform. So honestly, this is not one of those times. I feel like, I feel just like as soon as I started testing, I was like, there was no question. Yeah. In my mind. I think a lot of those in the past, it was like a challenge for me. Like, I think, let's see if we can get this to work on a, on the highest level. And then it would, and it was fun. And, and then, uh, this I know is, is, uh, not putting me at any kind of tough place to, to dig out. of. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah. what is on your schedule so far, as far as the indoors, you know, we got the first ASA coming up in Foley in February, but before then, what are you planning to shoot? Yeah. Um, you know, I have, I'm registered for Lancaster. Um, it's all going to, the indoor stuff's going to depend a lot on my dad too. He's, right. he's, um, just had open heart surgery. You know, it's, it's a tough situation right now trying to be there for him and my mom. So these early tournaments are going to be a real dependent on that. Um, yeah. but all the 3d stuff as normal um you know so you know as far as my plans go right now so all the asas all the ibos um, not doing reading not doing indoor nationals um yeah. so four kids and all kinds of other stuff it's just pick and choose what the best ones we can go to are so and how how much did it deflate you when matthews was like yeah you don't have to do the indoors i'm sure that was soul crushing for you yeah to- i begged to get out of vegas <laughs> I, I begged to get out of it it's just um honestly i feel like it sets me back I, I i know that sounds stupid i used to think it helped me but anymore i feel like i go to lancaster i get target panic i go to vegas i deal with target panic and then i spend the next two months trying to dig out of it you know it's like i would rather i was like i talked to him i said just let me go work the booth i just don't i hate it i just and i've been the problem is i've been good at it at, at a lot of times in the past and yeah you know it's just takes so much preparation mentally for the indoor stuff and i just don't like it and so i don't put the time as necessary into being good at it and um i can still shoot with with anybody i feel like on a good day it's just um it takes a lot out of me mentally i have the wrong personality to stand there and go brain dead i, I don't have whatever that is i'm up there trying to figure out how to win and I'm like no you dummy you just shoot the middle every time don't you know? miss yeah. <laughs> well yeah for folks who may not know it because w- we were down there with you but it was kyle what year was that that you shot your 900 in vegas and you actually had the high x count yeah is that like three 2019 or 20 we're trying to yeah. remember here it was yeah, something like that but yeah that's you know i think i got I, i've made that shoot off so many times shot 900s and i've had the high x count and i've had the low x count and it just doesn't matter and i think that's <laughs> one of the things that's so discouraging about that tournament to me it's like i can beat everybody here all weekend and get in a shoot off and it does not matter you know it's like <laughs> So I, um, and I've been so close, you know, a second and fourth and fifth Ugh. and it's just like, oh man, um, you know, it just, it's a funny tournament that I don't think you can really prepare for. Um, I don't know how you can get used to that, that pressure, even not even the pressure of the shoot down, which I obviously I've never been in it, but I always tell people I've been down on the floor for the third day of the 900 and I'm sweating. I'm nervous. Yeah. I'm not doing anything. So I can only imagine that you guys yeah. are even for worse. Me, it gets worse. <laughs> it gets worse every year. My first year there, I, I was fine. Really. I was 19, no lens, 70 pounds. Had no, I, all I knew was hit the yellow. I never <laughs> shot an official Vegas face, like at a in like a local nothing. I was like, oh, three arrows, okay. <laughs> Shoot a nine hundred, and I'm like, is that good? I, I don't know, you know. And uh, then I realized what I'd done, and like, oh, that was prestigious. And then it got harder, and it gets harder every year, you know. And I still shot nine hundreds. I've shot eight ninety sevens. I, I never know who's going to show up there, really. Um, oh, man. And so, you don't feel that at all when it comes 3D season? No, None of that. I don't feel it at all. I love it. 
I I get nervous and and excited and yeah. I think 3D is so strategic, especially the unknown game. It, it's so much to think about and so many ways to win. You can win by judging great. You can win by shooting great. You can win when you're not doing either better than everybody. You're just smarter, you know. And yeah. so there's so much that goes into being a great unknown 3D archer. And that's why there's not many people that try to do it because it takes so much, takes being great at so many things. Um, yeah. To, to do that. But I love it because I'm not focused on what I'm not supposed to do. I'm focused on all the ways I need to win. If I'm having a bad day judging, I have to be better at all the other things than everybody else, you know? And so, um, I think that's just why I love it also because that's what I've done since I, I was six. You right. Know, right. I fell in love with the game. I, I just, if there's just a different feeling, like you said, you know, I, I don't know, maybe it's, because I like bow hunting, because it's animals, something different there. But I know when I go to shoot an indoor round where it counts, there's just this nagging feeling of dread that I have. Where yeah. I'm not, I don't look forward to like, oh, yeah, man, let's do this. I'm like, all right, here we go. Let's get this over with. Yeah, I'm the same way. I feel <laughs> sick in my stomach. I'm like, it feels miserable. And I don't, I'm jealous of the guys that love it. Yeah. Yeah. The ones that are good at it, you know? Right. I'm um, like, chance has always been like, oh, let's do this, you know? And I'm like, what? <laughs> this is awful, you know? Yeah. And I, I've still managed to not embarrass myself sometimes, but those guys are the ones that really thrive because they found a way to love it. And, uh, I don't know. It's it's hard to be good at both, to be honest. You know, there's a few people that have chance and and um yeah. Well, not many. I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. Not many that can go um, do both because you have to have two different. You got to be able to flip that switch. I always said that between ASA and IBO, it's two different games. It's two different approaches to the game. You know, right? Um, the harder of those two in one way as far as there's more to think about, but the IBO is technically a lot harder of a course. It's, and it's, so, it's funny. The indoor guys, the ones who are really good at that, they're, they're the personalities are all so similar between chance, Jesse, oh, you yeah. know, even Bodie, Kyle Douglas, there, <laughs> Jacob. Well, actually, no, Jacob, he's different. He, he's got, Jacob, he's yeah. got a different a, personality. Well, choice. <laughs> Yeah, good choice of words. Jacob is different. There's no doubt. Yeah. But Jacob's one of my favorites. He's one of the few that can harness that the nerves that you can you can see he gets nervous. Yeah, yeah. But he harnesses it really, really well. Some of those guys you just don't see it. No. You know, they they feel it, but you don't see it. No. And um I, I remember when I won indoor nationals, the reason I won that tournament was because I realized they were nervous too. Uh, and um, that was the first time it really hit me that because from a distance, you, they, they look ice cold. Yeah. You know, when you're up there with them and like a foot away from them, you can feel that they're nervous. Uh huh. You know, they're, they're a little different. Their arrows are quivering in their quiver. I mean, that's when I was like, hey, wait a minute. They're nervous too. <laughs> you know, and before I knew it, I'd won indoor national. So it was like in moments in, in my life, I've stood up there, harnessed those nerves. And in a uh, World Cup, when I shot that stuff, I figured it out for a short period of time. Yeah. How to just stand up there and use that and, and not miss. You right, know? right, right. But I don't do it enough. Like, I, if I was dead serious about indoors, I should be at Rushmore Rumble. I should be shooting overseas. I should be shooting every week at some local to just be around people and yeah you have to do that to be really good at it and, yeah. and i just have different priorities you know i'm hunting still and my kids and it's just not fun to me so i just i don't know <laughs> i, I uh, choose not to put that and plus the worst part is if i prepare fully for a 3d i know i'm going to get something out of it yeah. i might not win every time but I'm going to be there and get to battle, you know, yep. and, and indoors, I have pre felt like I've prepared fully and go shoot an 899 and not make the shoot off. And it's like, what was all that time for? <laughs> you know, there's not enough events, big events for me to justify putting in months worth of preparation. Yeah. You know, it's, 
for 3D, there's a lot of events. So right. once I get prepared, like we get to see the fruits of our labor, you know, indoors, it's like after March, it's over. Done. Yeah. You know, like, okay, I just spent all my hunting season prepared. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I'll it's, just take my chances. It's interesting to hear you talk about this because like you said, you know, getting in there, shooting, even locals just around other people. So I don't do that. I shoot here in our warehouse by myself, man, my indoor game. I'm like, all right, yeah, this is pretty good. So yeah. then today we just went to film a segment where all I was doing was shooting against Casey Caulfield. I shoot against her or shoot with her all the time. It's just me and her shooting there. I came, I was shooting like eights and just <laughs> complete. I'm like, what, who is this person shooting this yeah. bow right now? What happened to the guy who was shooting them yesterday? <laughs> oh yeah. That's but, just the way it goes. I, I can, I tell everybody, whatever you shoot at home by yourself, you can buy cut that in half whenever they blow that whistle <laughs> in Vegas. Yeah. So you better be unbelievable at yeah. home to think you even stand a chance to make a shoot off in Vegas. Oh, man. Well, I should ask you, uh, are it's uh, January 9th now. Are you finally done hunting, or is there still some more left? No, I think I'm done. I got to – I think um, if I hunt again, it'll be in Ohio. Um, okay. I'm going to be going over there so much uh, with, with my dad and stuff um, – that if if a big one starts showing up there i might hunt him in the evenings or something like that but as far as plans go i'm done yeah yeah the, um, that's what i was doing this morning it's just past time to start getting ready for tournament season so i'm gonna start i was just tuning the title in there and uh building some arrows i'm gonna start shooting some some rounds get built back up for for tournament season I didn't see you post anything, or if I missed it or anything, about Pennsylvania this year. How did PA go for you? I had a ton of fun. I, I had a deer um, at the beginning of the year that I had planned on hunting really, really hard. Um, a big deer for PA. And uh, right out of the gate, I started getting him. Like, I okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill him. And my son, Landon, he's 11. Um, really want, like he kind of dove into bow hunting this year. He killed his first buck with a bow last year. This year, he's like, I want to do it out of a tree stand, like true bow hunting. Uh -huh. He's like, I don't want to be in no grizzly blind. I want to be in a tree stand. So I said, okay. So I was like, I got to find him a buck to hunt, you know? Well, about October 6th, opening week, the only buck I had, because I'd spent so much time on him, patterned was this big deer that I was, planning on spending my year on and he was working this scrape line every day going out to a bean field and i told landon i said look i've got him pegged i was like i'm gonna take you put you on him like let's go yeah. didn't take my bow really dumb move the first deer we see is him he stands up at like 58 yards in the crp stretches turns broadside <laughs> lays back down gets back up late and landon can't shoot past 30 yeah so we're like, well He's been walking this straight line every day, and and before you know it, doe comes out, blows the whole thing. Um, so he kind of goes MIA for a couple weeks, and um, then I started hunting all over the country, everywhere else. And I was like, I'm gonna, I'll kill him in the rut. Come back in the rut. He was locked on a doe every time I've seen him. Then, you know, had great hunts. Landon then, but I was also hunting with Landon, and he missed one. Um, we were hunting a lot. Another deer we call the Drop Time Seven, and. So my focus was kind of all over the place during hunting season. And yeah. I was like, late season, I know I got all the beans. I got all the food. I'll kill him late. And then he made it through gun season. And I was like, I think I want him to go another year. You know, I'm like, I don't, <laughs> I, don't I want to see what he does next year because he's not that old and he's a giant. And so yeah. he's healthy and made it through. So I'm just watching him right now you know every morning every evening coming to the beans coming out but no kidding i'm gonna take a chance on him and so um I, you know there's several old deer i would love to hunt on my place but they're just not they're not they're like ghosts you know they so, don't cooperate no they don't i've never <laughs> laid my eyes on one of them i get pictures of them all the time i can't see them to save my life so i think i'm just gonna focus on getting ready for tournament season and let them all live yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that's uh, amazing how those deer can do that. That's one of the things that I love about whitetail hunting is that 
and I'm hunting more uh, suburban stuff. So they right. also got to dodge cars and stuff and right. other people. And I'm like, how does this thing live year to year to year? Everybody around is hunting and oh, this yeah. thing makes it through. Uh, there was a couple deer this year. Cause I, you know, we have, we own 550 acres and then I lease another 600 that joins us. So I would be literally like me and Landon hunted one evening and we saw five big deer in the timber. One of them we call the non-typical. I watched all summer. It's just a giant side. And then the other side's like just, just straight up with like a bunch of points. And Landon had him at 50 yards working a scrape in the timber. Again, I didn't have my bow. I'm filming him. You know, we watched him. I was like, that's cool, you know. Well, the next morning I go hunt. I think it was like 1.7 miles away um, on a different little bench in, a, in some white oaks here comes that same non-typical. And I'm like, this deer is going to get killed first day of rifle. Like he is an idiot. And I had several deer like that. And then, um, yesterday he's with my giant walking into the beans. I'm like, how did he make it? You know? He's yeah. Still, yeah. So they have their ways and their little access in and out and ditches and they just know how to survive. But they're amazing animals. There's no doubt. So. I just asked Kyle Douglas the other day, one animal you can only hunt for the rest of your life. What's it going to be? He said elk, didn't he? He did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say whitetail for sure. For sure. Yeah, there's no doubt. I, I just, there's so much fun to hunt and you, and, um, you got all season, you, you yeah. know? Um, but yeah, the it's chess not, match is, it is just, a chess match and there's still nothing that gets my heart going. Like when you are hunting a specific deer and you, you don't see him and you don't see him and you don't, and then all of a sudden you see legs coming, you look and it's him. It's like, yeah. it's like, you feel like everything is on that. Cause you probably will never see him again, you know? So I, I just love it. Yeah. Love yeah. It. It's, it's, yeah. Western that, guy, that. of course, Kyle, the, you know, I can understand elk from the East. We're more used to the white tails. So it kind of makes sense, but uh, yeah, no doubt. I love elk hunting. Don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't pick it over white tail, but yeah, I think yeah. it's just, I know more about white tail than, than elk. So, so while we're talking about, uh, hunting and stuff, which ultra arrows were you using for hunting? It was, uh, I think this, this past trip, I was using the 166 Limited. I wasn't okay. even using the Premieres, I don't think, because I had just built some to play with. Yeah. Um, and I only took like seven with me um, down there. But I'll tell you one thing. They're heavier than my um, my gold tips were. Yeah. They are also tougher. I, I shot a big buck, and it um, was hanging out both sides, the arrow. And I, normally, if that happens... You can kiss that arrow goodbye. It'll break it. Yes. Yeah. Well, he crashes, and you'll see on. We're going to launch the YouTube video here in a couple of weeks, but he crashes into the nastiest stuff bush. You could barely see him in it, and I'm not even thinking my arrow at this point. Yeah. I pull him out, and I'm like, I see my my broadhead sticking out, so I just pull it on through, and it's perfect. The no whole crack. arrow. I, I couldn't believe it, but <laughs> um, now it is. I mean, it is a tank like it is a little heavier and just, i mean i'm shooting yeah. a 250 spine so it's a I, if that didn't break it i don't know what's going to break them but were you have you hunted with 166s like were you shooting that for gold tip you were yeah i was shooting the pierce platinums for gold okay. tip and like our lrp system um from swacker yeah which we are we're building for this arrow too this um the centrum 166s but um, just a tough system all the way around, but yeah, the one six six I love for hunting. You do. Is it for the penetration, or is it for the wind drift, or is it both? Or oh, it's it's both. It's okay. uh, penetration, wind drift. I just feel like they the little arrows just shoot better for me. Um, okay. And but the the problem has always been the components. I hated all the half certs and out certs and aluminum broadheads, and then you try to get it. And it spins terrible and you spend all day on a spine tester trying to bend it straight now which is why we developed the, the lrp system for the 166 it's less components and they they're self-centering and they're you know have the steel ferrule going up inside the broadhead to keep everything straight so it's uh and once we developed that system it's been a, a no no doubter for me right right and are the uh 
are does Altra have the component or excuse me, uh, your tech, do you have yep. the components now for the Altra or you're just starting to build them? We are building. So they sent me a pack of like a hundred the other day that we we're testing, making sure that they were perfect and they were perfect. So we're, we're uh, in the, in the process of having all that available for this coming season. So um, gotcha. there's still some conversations that have to happen. Obviously when you change anything like that in a, in a line of products. Um, but that's the goal is we, we will offer um, everything that I shoot in the LRP lineup. So. Gotcha. Well, all right. Uh, then I'll end on Levi. So coming into this year, how do you set expectations? Do you set expectations, goals for the year at the beginning? Yeah, I don't really have goals um, other than to win everything. Uh, <laughs> that's easy. <laughs> yeah, but that's my goal every year, you know, and it's, I've never done that, but I just start high. I, um, I expect to, to I've, you know, I ended the year last year shooting better than I'd, I felt like I'd ever shot in my life. And I expect to pick up right where I left off if that's what, uh, uh, good Lord willing, you know, I mean, obviously things change. I may show up this year and not be able to hold it in a pie plate, but, you know, eventually that's going to happen. And I'm not 20 anymore. So we'll see. But I have in my mind high expectations for the year. I am excited um, to get going. Um, but, I have a lot of other things going on and irons in the fire. And so, yeah, we're going to do our best and work hard at it. 13 time ASA shooter of the year. Are they getting harder to, is it getting harder to add to that total? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, I held on 12 in a row. Um, which if you'd asked me in the beginning, I'd have never thought that was possible to hold right. on and not make a mistake for that long. Um, but once I lost, it was almost like a weight off my shoulders because the shooter of the year race is so heavy, you know, from the day, like the get go. It's the one thing that like is always lurking. You know, you can't really be too aggressive because, you know, shooter of the year is on the line. You can't risk even in certain situations where a tournament, you feel like maybe you could win it if you went all out in the last 10 targets. You're like, yeah, but shooter of the year, you know, so. Huh. After that, it was almost like became more important for me to just let it all go and um, shoot to win individual tournaments and just really have fun. And and I won. I didn't win the next year. Then I won another shooter of the year to make it 13. I didn't win last year. Um, last year, I really felt like I, I, I mean, it came down to like one, one or two points there at the yeah. final turn. So when it when you shoot that well, there's you can't really be upset, especially McCarthy. He's consistent. He doesn't make many mistakes. Um, if it wasn't for McCarthy, my shooter of the years have, would have been a lot more uh, enjoyable, you know, because he has just made made my life um, tough as far as that goes. But I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, all those guys, Hacker and and Marlo and and Danny Evans and. You know, Andy Callaway. I mean, I'm going to miss him. Brooks, when he shoots in the unknown. So many guys can just even chance. You know, he was leading shooter of the year for a while. This yeah. Year. And those guys catch fire. It's like, okay, nothing you can do with them. Hopefully they don't stay that way forever, you know. And and uh, I've just been very lucky in the past to, to stay consistent and be right there at the top and – so there would be tournaments where you would, I don't want to say lay up, but you would maybe take your foot off the gas because of shooter of the year. Yeah, it was more, um, it was always in the back of my mind. You know, it was like yeah. on a 50 and a half yard coyote or something like that, that I think is 50 yards or, you know, I want to shoot it for 50, but I really think eight and a half or nine or 12 it, you know, yeah. I have to, in those situations go, if he is 50 and a half and I shoot it for eight and a half, I'm going to five it. And so that's a, you know, a five point swing and that could cost me shooter of the year. So in that situation, I would have to go, all right, let's just shoot it for 50, make a strong shot. And most of the time shoot right over the 12 and go, dang it. You know, um, <laughs> if I hadn't had that in the back of my mind, what would my play have been right there? Cause it's always like, you can't give up those big mistakes and win shooter of the year. And I can think back last year to two that cost me shooter of the year. One was in Kentucky. One was at the classic. Um, both of them, I judged right, made a stupid play on the, the lighting in Kentucky. I shot like a 37 yard 
uh, leopard in the foot because I just got lulled to sleep from the shadows and just made had the right number. And then at the classic, I fived a Wolverine in the back with a perfect number and still don't know what happened. So it's like one of those back, I went shooter of the year, just yeah. one of those shots. And so once you realize how important it is to not make a big mistake, you start changing your plays based on that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Huh. Awesome. Yeah. Well, is there anything that we didn't talk about that you wanted to talk about here this morning? Oh gosh, I don't know. I, um, no, just thank you guys for what you do. I'm excited to see you all this year and, yeah. and um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pumped to see everybody and, and, um, just have some laughs and hopefully, hopefully do well. We'll see. I'm, I'm, uh, priorities have changed quite a bit here at home. So I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, I'm excited to get back on the, on the tournaments, but also it's, it's my, my kids are like, not wanting me to leave either. So it's kind of bittersweet that that time's almost here, but um, we're going to go give it heck and hopefully, hopefully do it well. Which is your favorite ASA? I don't think I've ever asked you that. Do you have one? I'm, uh, I would say London, Kentucky is my favorite. Okay. Yeah. Cause everybody else hates it. <laughs> I just say, I just love Foley because of the food. Yeah, the good is, seafood. Good, and the weather's normally pr pretty decent. Foley's <laughs> good, but um, London is just so tough. It makes me love. It reminds me of growing up shooting same stuff. So yeah, um, yeah. So I'm you were there. So you were excited when you heard London wasn't going away this year. I was very excited. That was that was great news. That was great news. <laughs> Everybody else is groaning. Oh, yeah. power line, and you're saying yes. Yeah, power line. Like, put, put me on the power line. I want it. I want bad lighting and 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 angles and all of it. <laughs> awesome. All right, folks. Well, that is another episode of the Competition Archery Media Podcast. Levi Morgan, Ultra Arrows. Congratulations on that. We certainly appreciate your time today. Thank you, PJ. Folks, Competition Archery Media Podcast, you can find on all the platforms, wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Thanks for joining us today.